Hey everyone, welcome to today's video, Konnichiwa. Today we'll be doing uh, some look at permissions, so how to ask to do things, how to ask if it's okay if we don't do things, and also kind of the other side of it where people tell us we're not allowed to do things. But that's going to come up in the next video. So mainly today we're going to be looking at our permissions, asking if it's okay to do something. So up here I've got a link to bit.ly, this will also be in the YouTube description box. Now if you click on this link, it'll take you straight to this Google Doc itself. So there will be a word list at the end, plus the example sentences, you can copy and paste them into your own study. All right, so let's get started. Now dealing with permissions in Japanese requires a bit of other learning first. So first of all, you have to make sure that you know your TEF form pretty well. Now, I've done a whole video on the TEF form. Take him also has a, a really good run through on his website, guide to japanese.org. But when you want to, when I say the TEF form, it's going to involve every single part of the TEF form. So we want to be able to do it with verbs, we want to be able to do it with nouns, adjectives, and we also want to be able to do the negative um, TEF forms as well. Now, uh, the negative ones are pretty easy because it's basically. All the negatives end in I, so janai, um, kunai, and you know just nai for our verbs, and then we remove that last e and put uh, kute. So you know janakute, you know oish kunakute, and you know tabenakute. Just as an example of three. So the negatives are quite straightforward to remember, and then. Um, uh, for the adjectives, we're just replacing the e with kute. For the na adjectives and nouns, we're just putting de on the end. And then for verbs, for ru verbs, we're just replacing a ru with te. And for u verbs, we've got that table where we kind of have to say, well, we've got suru and kuru and iku as three um, exceptions, which are shite, kite, and itte. And then we have that table where there are four options. So all verbs that end in su become shite. If they end with uh, ku or gu, they become ite or ide. And if they be end with uh, bu, nu, and what's the other one? Bu, nu, and mu, they all become nde. And then if they end with ru, tsu, or u, they have a little tsu and a te, okay? So I went through that pretty quickly, but I, like I said, I've got a whole video on the TEF form, so I would really check that out. And you wanna be basically better do that without thinking because the TEF form is gonna be vital for a lot of this stuff. Uh, the next thing is you really wanna revise your conditionals. So this is really how do we create an if or a when statement. Uh, again, Tae Kim's got a really good uh, section on his website, it's just called Conditionals, and he goes through all of them. So we really need to know our kereba uh, type conditional or our, our ba conditional, really. So this is a, a conjugation. We want to know our to conditional, really it's just adding to on the end of things, but this is our natural conditional. And then uh, what's called a tara form, or the, I like to call it the ra form, but basically we're dealing with plain uh, verbs and stuff like that. Yeah, that's why the ta is there. So again, you want to know these really, really well because you're going to have to be able to make them on the fly, especially when we start um, doing must, uh, must or have to kind of permissions. We're going to use that. We're not going to do that in today's video though. So um, if you're not quite up to it, don't worry. Uh, last one is we just need to know these three words, dame, ikenai, and naranai. Now this goes again going to be with the next video when we talk about uh, more strict permissions. So I'm um, not to worry about those quite yet. But really all these three words mean no good. The only kind of tricky thing is that dame is a noun so we have to apply the noun rules to it. For example we're adding des to it. Uh, ikenai and naranai are both technically verbs so they take all the verb rules. So for example this would be ikemasen and this is narimasen, all right? But otherwise, it's not really helpful to think of the positive verbs of this. And again, I would direct you to take Kim's website on, um, I forget what it's called now. Say, I think it's called saying what m one must do or what must one must not do, something like that. 
anyway, if, uh, if you can't find it, just leave a comment on YouTube and I'll, I'll link you to it. But he explains these three words. The first thing to keep in mind is that there is a bit of a strategy at getting good at permissions. I know for sure that I hated this part of Japanese for a long time because I just found it very confusing and I didn't understand why there was so much grammar involved to, you know, what are pretty simple sentences in English? Can I do this? Can I do that? Must I do this? Do I have to do that? It gets a little bit uh, convoluted in Japanese sometimes. So the main thing, I think, the best strategy for this is that you just remember that uh, permissions in Japanese have a very standard way of being said. And then we want to think of uh, basically using mnemonics of these English uh, phrases which literally represent what happens in Japanese. So then you say that English phrase to yourself and for example the phrase we're going to do is even if you do X it's okay. All right. And so that means you know that the even we know that the more has to be in there. Okay means we need it have to have um, e daijoubu or kamaimasen, you know, one of these three words. And then, you know, even if you do uh, whatever in the brackets here, we're going to need the um, the tefl conjugation of the verb or the noun or whatever the case may be. So really, you just want to try and say this phrase to your, this English phrase to yourself over and over and over again. And I'm going to give you separate phrases for the other types of permissions as well. But that's where you really want to start from. And then we just kind of substitute our different words in. So I've got some example sentences here. So I'll just read these out and then we'll look at them, uh, break them down a little bit more. So we have, Gomen nasai. Chotto keshi gomu wo karite mo ii desu ka? Next one, we have, Sore oishiso. Chotto tabete mo ii? And last one, Koko ni ocha ga arimasu kara? So again, there's a word list at the end of this if you want to refer to it, but gomen nasai, so kind of excuse me, sorry. Chotto, okay? Now we're going to end up using this word a lot in permissions, okay? And this is kind of a cultural thing, I guess, about Japanese, where when you're asking for things or being quite direct about what you want, what you want to do, uh, you need, you're going to need to use a lot of softeners, and chotto is a really common softener. It just means a little bit... And so it just enables you to soften the sentence a little um, slightly, I guess. Then we have keshi gomu. Good word to remember. This is an eraser. You know, and pencils are still a big deal in Japan, so you need to know this word. And then kariru. Okay, this is our verb to borrow something. So it's a ru verb, so karite. Mo i desu ka? Keshi gomu o karite mo. So is it okay? And we got a ka here. So is it okay? Even if I borrow your rubber or your eraser. Um, I don't know if that's Australian English or not. But keshi gomu wo karite mo ii desu ka? Okay? Really standard way. Now we could substitute e for daijoubu or kamaimasen. Maybe a little bit weird though. Uh, e is overwhelmingly the most common word. Uh, maybe one little thing about this word, kamaimasen. It comes from the verb kamau, kamau, which is to mind or to care about something. And so, kamawanai, kamaimasen. These are the negative versions of this verb. So, I don't mind, I don't care. But, I mean, you could you, hear it. It sounds, sounds a bit strange to me. I mean, technically it works, but... Just stick with E. That's best. Uh, that's the best option. So next one we got. Sore oishiso. Okay, so maybe a bit of revision, but oishiso that looks delicious. Okay, if so the person's looking at some food, uh, oishiso. Chotto tabete mo ii. Now this is very casual Japanese, but again we have our E. Good. Even. Tabete to eat. So, is it okay even if I eat it? All right. And then the response would be, hai. You know, tabete mo ii desu yo. Maybe not desu yo, but tabete mo ii yo. All right, it's okay if you eat it. And next one, we have, koko ni ocha ga arimasu kara. So, basically, this person saying, hey, there's, there's tea here. Therefore, or because of this, 
自由に、so this 自由 is free, and 自由に kind of treats it like an adverb, so 自由に so to do it freely, 飲んでもいいですよ。Okay, so いい it's good, も even if, 飲んで if you drink. Okay, again a bit of a tef form there, right? We have 飲む and that becomes 飲んで飲んでもいいですよ。So it's okay, even if Uh, you drink it. All right, so this person's really offering it. Okay, saying, hey, just before you ask, it's fine. You just go ahead and pour tea and drink it if you want. Okay, so that basically wraps it up for the, the this is probably the simplest permission that there is. It's pretty standard, but、uh, if we're talking about JLPT, this is going to come up in N5 and to a lesser extent N4, but this is definitely a, a threshold that you have to be able to. Do to pass N5, I would say. Okay, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I'll be releasing a part two and perhaps even a part three where I go through the other permissions like must or have to, so shinakereba narimasen, stuff like this. So stay tuned. Like the video if you found it useful. Please subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notifications when I put out the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye. Every dimension, give me attention. Look at myself, look at my heart.